welcome to this lecture. Today we are going to talk about the design of a fixed bed type regenerator. So, here we will try to solve a numerical problem already we have discussed about the design procedure what are the type of I mean how we will uh, go about the design of a regenerator what are the parameters that is to be fixed or finalized from a design problem of a regenerator that we have already discussed in the previous uh, uh, lecture classes. And in this particular lecture as you can understand that the design of any regenerator is uh, quite similar to the design of a heat exchanger like where we intend to find out the length or other parameters or the uh, design parameters of the heat exchanger similar to that here we want to decide what are the parameters uh, which will be necessary uh, like what would be the length of the regenerator, what would be the material or the amount of material to be used uh, particularly for that regenerator uh, under the condition that the flow rate of the uh, uh, this uh, process is already known or the temperature of the uh, fluid flowing inside or flowing in the hot stream during the hot uh, period or during the cold period the temperature of the fluid streams are given. So, uh, first of all uh, if it is a valve type as we have said again that this is a valve type matrix uh, uh, and it is made of uh, say copper wire screen. So, this is something new to us uh, already we have talked about the packed bed spheres, but this is about the copper wire screen and this is used as the matrix uh, you know, for the regenerator. And uh, here uh, once we have said about the uh, matrix uh, I mean material we know it is a specific uh, heat particularly uh, at the temperature if it is specified. So, and it is a thermal conductivity and the density of the material is also given. So, here for this copper bar screen we have a porosity of about 0.7 uh, and it is a wet screen diameter is 0.5 millimeter. So, it is a oven screen and uh, this uh, wet diameter is uh, told uh, it is given. So, we have to find out the equivalent diameter uh, and its expression we will uh, uh, we, uh, I remember in the previous class we have talked about it and uh, uh, if it is not we will uh, today we will discuss about that part. That stacked wet screen are uh, contained in two identical uh, I mean tubes. So, it is ID is uh, 52.5 millimeter and the working gas is argon. So, uh, it is already as I have told that we need to know certain more parameters like the flow rate of the fluid streams and uh, its temperature and pressure. So, that we would be able to find out the fluid properties and here for this hot stream we know that the temperature of the hot stream is 300 Kelvin. It is entering at a pressure of 608 kilo Pascal and its flow rate is 20 gram per second. Whereas, the cold stream is entering at a temperature of 100 Kelvin at a reduced pressure of 304 kilo Pascal, but uh, its flow rate is not equal to the hot flow rate and its flow rate is reduced slightly by 19, uh, it's, uh, it is uh, 19 gram per second. The switching frequency of the regenerator is 3 cycles per minute. So, that means in every uh, you know after 3 cycles per minute uh, the, the uh, I mean hot fluid and the cold fluid stream will uh, change. And uh, for this particular problem uh, uh, we have already specified the heat transfer coefficient otherwise uh, this is generally it is not known and uh, we are supposed to find out uh, once we have told about the uh, wire screen and uh, its flow rates are known. So, the heat transfer coefficient and the pressure drop or the friction factors uh, can be obtained from the correlations corresponding to the uh, copper screen. And, uh, but however, for this uh, the problem we have already uh, evaluated it uh, and it is uh, the hot uh, and the cold fluid uh, 
heat transfer coefficients are uh, given as H H and H C. And what we are supposed to find out is the length and the mass of the copper screen required to achieve an effectiveness regenerator effectiveness of 0.98. So, if we have to achieve 98 percent efficient uh, regenerator effectiveness, what would be the mass of the copper screen to be used and what would be the mass or what would be the length of the regenerator that we have to specify or we have to calculate. So, these are the parameters that has been given and uh, the procedure that we have to follow, uh, we will first uh, look into that and uh, then we will go about the solution of this problem. So, so first of all, uh, we will try to find out what is the average uh, fluid temperature to find out the specific heat or the fluid properties. Then we try to calculate since we know the mass flow rate of the fluid stream, uh, hot fluid stream and the cold fluid stream. So, we would be able to find out the hot fluid capacity and the cold fluid capacity and from there we would be able to calculate the capacity ratio CR because we know that depending on the CR value whether it is uh, CR equals to 1 or not then we, our calculation will change. So, once we know uh, the CR value and uh, we will be if it is not CR equals to 1, then we will go for this calculation of this x parameter and given by this relation uh, ln into 1 minus epsilon CR multiplied uh, divided by 1 minus epsilon. So, from there we would go to the calculation of epsilon 1 and this epsilon 1 is again this uh, correlation is given already we have talked about it. So, we will try to find out this epsilon 1. So, now, uh, we have an effectiveness uh, corresponding to this C r value uh, based on that x and this epsilon is uh, what we are looking for, epsilon is 0.98, we are looking for an effectiveness of 98 percent. So, from there we will be able to calculate x and we will be able to find out an equivalent epsilon 1. So, that is equals to uh, given by this correlation. So, once we know that uh, uh, we will try to uh, now find out uh, the C m, C m the matrix capacity rate ratio. So, this, uh, but uh, please note that we have uh, for uh, sorry, uh, we have uh, for this uh, parameter uh, we need to know the mass flow rate, mass of the regenerator and the specific heat of the regenerator. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, this is one of the parameter that is what we are trying to find out. So, we have no idea about uh, this uh, C m. So, uh, if we do not know we, what we have to do is that we have to say we do not know about it. So, we will assume some equivalent value of this one and from there uh, we will you know already we have uh, the value of this epsilon because we have already epsilon 1 we have calculated based on this uh, parameter x we have calculated uh, epsilon 1 and we have assumed some value of C m e. So, once we have that C m e and equivalent uh, matrix capacity rate ratio and uh, then we have the value of epsilon. So, we would be able to find out the equivalent uh, n u. So, uh, like you know if we have uh, find some value of this epsilon and corresponding to say 0 0.98 or something like 0 0.968. Uh, for example, if we have obtained say 0 0.968 and we have assumed uh, say value of uh, C m e equals to 1.5. So, the corresponding n t u is 60. So, that is what is uh, the uh, I mean depending on the value of this epsilon 1 that has been obtained and the approximation or the assumption of C m we would be able to get some equivalent n t u. So, once we know that uh, equivalent uh, n t u value we would be able to calculate uh, the n t u based on this uh, relation. So, once we know that n t u value then we have 
uh, you know we can put it uh, in terms of n t u equals to u a by c min and you note know that uh, this c min part is already known to us because already we have a calculated c h and c c. So, out of these two we would be able to find out or distinguish which one is the c mean. So, once we know the c mean uh, this n t u part is already known the c mean part is known we would be able to calculate the u a. Now, you note that this u uh, a is basically uh, nothing but 1 by h h and a h plus 1 by h c a c uh, whole to the power minus 1. Here most of the cases you will find that the regenerator uh, are fixed bed regenerators uh, in case of fixed bed regenerator this a h is equals to a c and uh, we can you know take out it uh, from this uh, outside this one. And also we need to have an estimate of this uh, h c and a h uh, h h and h c the heat transfer coefficient for the hot fluid stream and the cold fluid condition. And uh, so, uh, accordingly as you can understand that we have already have an estimate of this u a since we know this u a and uh, you know we have already uh, knowledge about the h c and uh, h h and h c uh, we have the you know uh, we can calculate the heat transfer surface area corresponding to the uh, hot fluid or the cold fluid stream. So, once we know this uh, surface area, uh, we know uh, what is the ratio of uh, heat transfer area per length uh, and uh, or generally it is in terms of the uh, A w by V 0 corresponding to the packed bed sphere or corresponding to the uh, wet screen mesh um, uh, oven screen. So, from there we would be able to find out uh, this uh, A w by V 0 is already known in terms of uh, it is uh, porosity and etcetera and then we would be able to uh, correlate it with this V 0 will be correlated with uh, that uh, length and from there we would be able to uh, calculate the uh, length of the regenerator. Particularly for this problem we know that uh, this uh, A 0 by L uh, or A w by L is given by for a wet screen uh, type uh, process. A w by A w by L is equals to 4 times 1 minus E v multiplied by A frontal area divided by D w. What is this D w? D w is uh, the diameter of the wet screen. E v is the uh, uh, porosity or the point uh, inside this uh, bed and uh, this A frontal is the front L area of that bit. So, accordingly as we have obtained the A w and we know the frontal area, we know the wet skin diameter the uh, porosity. So, we would be able to find out the length of the regenerator. And now once we know the regenerator length, we would be able to find out the uh, M s uh, the amount of the element or say the uh, wet screen uh, the copper wet screen that will be necessary. So, this is given by 1 minus E v into rho s into V 0. So, this is E v is known rho s is already been given and V 0 is the volume of the uh, of the uh, regenerator. And so, accordingly we would be able to calculate the mass of the copper screen that would be necessary. But please mind that uh, it was based on an assumption that we have assumed some value of C m e or the matrix uh, capacity rate uh, ratio and because we did not have an idea about this m s. So, we have done all this calculation based on uh, some value of the m s and now we are getting some value of this m s at the end. Now, obviously, we can understand that this uh, you know depending on our initial guess 
uh, this may not be the same. Uh, we have uh, based on this MS, uh, you know, we will now be able to calculate a new value of the CM and that value of the CM will give us a new value of the CME and from there again, you know, we will get NTU effective and from there we have to calculate the NTU. From that NTU, we will be able to calculate that UA by CMN and the procedure will be repeated. So, that means here this process becomes an iterative process. So, based on our initial assumption of that CM, our next calculation or the number of iterations that are to be done will depend. So, if we make a good estimation of that CM, uh, we, the number of iterations will be less. Otherwise, if we are making a bad estimate of this regenerator uh, capacity CM, uh, we will land up with a different mass and we have to uh, I mean do number of iterations to get the actual value. So, as you can understand um, uh, this is the procedure for uh, uh, doing the calculation or the regenerator design. So, now we will go to the slide I mean we will try to calculate uh, for this particular problem uh, which we have defined uh, in this uh, uh, case. So, here uh, we have been told that we are going to use the valve screen a valve type regenerator and uh, this regenerator uh, is uh, uh, made of uh, this copper wire screen its porosity is given and uh, the other parameters like say rho w that is the density uh, is uh, coming to be 8900 kg per meter cube. This is we are talking about the copper and then specific heat C w uh, it is also 0 0.350 and uh, it is uh, kilo joule per kg Kelvin. This is uh, the uh, specific heat and then we have the thermal conductivity uh, K w or K s uh, I mean this is equals to 300 watt per uh, meter Kelvin. So, these are the values uh, we have for the material uh, and uh, once we know this material uh, we have to uh, now look for uh, as we have said that we need to look for this is for the material part uh, or this is for the copper and uh, we need to look for the uh, gas part. The gas is uh, argon and uh, this gas is we have already said that this gas is uh, argon and uh, uh, it is entering at uh, some temperature and pressure and it is uh, moving out with at some different temperature and pressure. So, uh, its uh, inlet temperature was uh, 300 for the hot and 200 for the cold stream. So, we will uh, take it sorry the 100 as the for the cold one. So, it is at an average temperature of 200 Kelvin we will try to estimate its property and uh, the Cp corresponding to this value is 0 0.5 to 4 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, that is what is the uh, CP value of this uh, argon gas. So, this gaseous argon CP once we know we would be able to calculate the uh, heat uh, capacity of the hot fluid and that of the cold fluid. So, now we see the CH equals to MHCH and that will come out to be 0 0.02 multiplied by 5 to 4 uh, and this comes out to be uh, 10.48 watt per Kelvin. Similarly, the CC is uh, MC CC and uh, the mass flow rate of this one is slightly less as we have seen this is uh, 0 0.019 multiplied by 5 to 4 and uh, this many watt per Kelvin and this comes out to be 18.87 18.87 watt per Kelvin. So, as you can understand that uh, this is the uh, 
sorry, I am sorry, this is a 9.956 watt per Kelvin. So, it is the C mean and uh, this is uh, the C max. So, this value is the C max value and this value is the C mean value. So, we have the C mean and C max and then we would be able to calculate the C r. So, this is C mean by C max and from there we would be able to find out that this is nothing but 0 0.950. So, we have an idea about C r and C r not equals to 1. So, already we have an idea about the C r. So, we have the idea of C h C c and now we would be able to calculate uh, the x factor that uh, parameter and that will come out to be uh, we have already uh, told about the expression of this one. So, 1 minus 0 0.95 multiplied by this is C r multiplied by the epsilon 0 0.98 divided by 1 minus 1.98 that is the effectiveness. So, this x comes out to be 1.238, 1.238 is the value of this x. So, corresponding to that value if we put it in that value of the epsilon we get uh, this epsilon 1 to be 0.9602. So, this is the value of epsilon 1 and at this point what we need to do is that uh, we need to calculate the matrix uh, capacity rate ratio and which is not known C m uh, as we have said that uh, it is we have no idea about the mass of uh, the regenerated material that will be necessary. So, we will make an assumption about uh, this C m uh, equivalent C m e and that has been chosen as three for this particular problem. So, once we know that uh, C m equals to three and we have an idea about this regenerator effectiveness. So, 0 0.960 is the regenerator effectiveness and the equivalent uh, this capacity rate ratio is three. So, corresponding to those two values we will go back to that uh, NTU and uh, C m e relation particularly for the epsilon and so we have this value we have this value we will go for this value so accordingly uh, we will find that into uh, if you use that chart you will find that this comes out to be 29.6 so once this is uh, known as 29.6 uh, we would be able to calculate the value of the into so, this n t u comes uh, you know n t u and n t u equivalent they are uh, related by this relation n t u uh, effective divided by 2 c r. So, we have this n t u coming to be 30. So, 30 or 30.4 uh, that actually this is 30.4 and uh, so this is uh, the n t u value based on our assumption of C m e equals to 3. So, we are getting a value of n t u equals to 30.4. So, once we know the n t u we would be able to calculate the uh, it is just uh, nothing but u uh, v by C mean. We have the idea about C mean and uh, this is uh, uh, you know u v would become uh, 1 by uh, a h c a c uh, we are calling it say w uh, plus 1 by h h a w and this whole to the power minus 1. So, already uh, this is uh, known. So, u a uh, by c mean c mean is already known this part is known this is uh, this will come out to be say a w the divided by 1 by h c plus 1 by h h uh, whole to the power minus 1 
and if we put this value or divide this value by c mean uh, then it comes to be uh, ua by c mean that is equals to the n u that is equals to 30.4 multiplied by c mean value was uh, c mean value was 0.9.956. So, that is equals to a w into 1 by h c plus 1 by h h whole to the power minus 1. So, here if you look at you will find that already we have talked about this h h and h c. So, we can find out the a w uh, and from there we would be able to calculate this a w uh, to be 1.732 uh, meter square. So, this is what is the area needed for this uh, uh, particular uh, regenerator to achieve uh, you know 98 percent uh, porosity, but please mind that we have made an assumption that uh, the CME equivalent is 3. So, now uh, once we know the area uh, we would be able to as we have said that uh, we will be able to calculate the length. Uh, so, A w by L is uh, 4 into 1 minus E v and multiplied by A frontal area divided by d w is the wet diameter and from there uh, if we put all these values e v is uh, 0.7 then we have the frontal area uh, that also is about 0 0.002165 and uh, the wet screen diameter this is equals to 50 point sorry 0 0.50 multiplied by minus 10 to the minus 3 and from there we get uh, uh, a w by l is equals to 5.19 5.195 meter square per meter. So, already we have the value of a w we would be able to calculate the length and it will come out to be 0.333 meter. So, this is the length of the uh, regenerator. So, now we have the mass that is equals to 1 minus E v multiplied by rho s into v 0 and then you know if we put these values that comes out to be 1.927 kg of copper screen. The Now, uh, this is uh, we have an idea about the ms. So, once we have the idea about the ms we can now you can see that we would be able to calculate the cm because we know the cm equals to mscs uh, mscs divided by that p0 and uh, that other parameters. So, once we have that one uh, we would be able to uh, calculate the, the matrix capacity rate ratio and from there we get uh, you know the second estimate this will come out to be 3.387. So, we have a, you know uh, a quite a good uh, uh, estimate of this uh, uh, CM and accordingly you will find that CME is coming to be 0.3 and from there you will be able to calculate the mass and so and there you will have this N T U uh, equivalent to be uh, 29.3 and finally, this uh, length will converge to nearly about 0.33 meter or 330 ma mm. So, here uh, that will correspond to uh, a mass of about 1 point the total mass will come out to be about 1.906 kg of uh, copper screen. So, this is uh, in a nutshell about the design of this uh, regenerator and uh, but please mind that uh, in many of the cases uh, we will not have uh, this uh, idea about uh, the uh, uh, this uh, 
heat transfer coefficient and we have to depend on the correlation existing correlations or we have to depend on the experimental value of the heat transfer coefficient to uh, uh, design this kind of regenerators. Thank you for your attention.